Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to my channel. So today, uh, I don't know how you're feeling about the human condition right now, but what I'm about to tell you is not going to help. So if you have some kind of content you can watch that lifts your spirits, a good meal you can have, whatever comforting thing you can reach for, I would save that for after this video. I came across some news that was so horrifying to me that I was like, surely this is not real. This has to be some kind of clickbait. There has to be some kind of weird misunderstanding going on. Lo and behold, there's no misunderstanding. We are just alive in a time where So anyway, I came across this the other day, right? But because it's so surreal to me, I was like, that can't be real. I'm gonna fact check that later and come back to it. So I came back to it. High court in India rules that viewing, downloading child porn is not a crime. The Supreme Court of India is hearing arguments from child protection organizations after the Madras High Court ruled that downloading and watching child pornography is not a criminal offense. In January, the High Court dismissed charges against 28-year-old S. Harish, who was caught in possession of two pieces of child sexual abuse material on his cell phone. It's always the same thing with this shit. It's always genuinely the same fucking thing. Now listen, I'm glad they're hearing arguments from child protection organizations. That's whatever. The fact that we have to have arguments from child protection organizations is what concerns me because it would be like me having a murder isn't okay counsel. And when someone gets murdered, I have to come in and be like, hey guys, by the way, let me give you a list of reasons as to why murder is not okay. It's one of those things that you'd kind of hope people would know and that you'd not have to argue. The whole concept of having child protection organizations having to chime in, like the situation is so fucking dire that this is where we're at. I genuinely do not know what to do with that information. According to Op India, in addition to claiming Harish was innocent because he'd never viewed child porn before, Madras High Court Judge N. Venkatesh also noted that it was, quote unquote, done in privacy without affecting or influencing anyone else. Oh man, I need something stronger than this. I need a lobotomy. Where? And when you are viewing child pornography is absolutely not part of the conversation for me. Like the fact that you're doing it in privacy, okay, like do you get a cookie? Like what the fuck? who cares? Who cares? Aside from that, without affecting or influencing anyone else. Hello, I don't know what database this man was using, whatever the fuck. But I'm certain that like any other website that hosts any type of video content, downloads count for something. So if there's a download, there's effectively a demand. So whoever's uploading the content knows, ah yes, look, there's this one fucking disgusting human who decided to download this, so I'm gonna keep uploading it and keep profiting off of it, I can only assume, without affecting anyone else. And that's on a financial level. We're gonna get to the morality in a second, but on a financial level, you're affecting someone else. And you're also influencing someone else because again, most people are influenced by money. If they see that you're buying whatever the fuck they're selling, they're gonna keep selling. Done in the privacy without affecting or influencing anyone else. Are we forgetting who's in this type of content? You think the children who are in this type of content are not affected? Because the reason that they're affected and this type of content is made is because people like this guy download it. Again, we return to the numbers of supply and demand. So it's all related. You can't take it apart. You can't pretend like one thing doesn't directly affect the other. And more than anything, you can't be that delusional to be like, oh, this guy did it in his fucking creepy ass basement. And so therefore it's fine. I feel like I'm genuinely losing my shit and it is the end of the semester. So partially yes, but the defendant claimed that the child sexual abuse material had auto-downloaded after he received it through the popular messaging app, WhatsApp, which his attorneys maintained is not a criminal offense under the Protection of Children from Sexual Offenses Act and the Information Technology Act. 
Okay, interesting. So I use WhatsApp and I have for the past decade. The only time I've had things automatically download is like when a friend sends me a picture, it'll automatically download, right? And you can still opt for that to not save to your phone, by the way. The only context in which I believe that would actually really happen is if someone is sending you child sexual abuse material. Now, let's work backwards. Why would someone be sending you child sexual abuse material? Unless a random person got your phone number, added your WhatsApp, decided to message you child sexual abuse material for no reason whatsoever, which is very likely, that happens to everyone, right? Unless that happened, clearly you were talking to someone who had that type of content and sent it your way. I refuse to believe that I just kind of fell in your lap. Truly, I'm sorry, but no. This auto download shit, it can happen, yeah, like, like I said. But the situation that leads up to an automatic download, to make out an offense under section 14 of the Protection of Child from Sexual Offenses Act 2012, a child or children must have been used for pornography purposes. This would mean that the accused person should have used the child for pornographic purposes. Even assuming that the accused person had watched child pornography videos, that strictly will not fall within the scope of section 14, the Protection of Child from Sexual Offenses Act, 2012, explained the judge at the Madras High Court. Two sentences here, which make me want to end my life. So it says, even assuming that the accused person had watched child pornography, that strictly will not fall within the scope of section 14 of the Protection of Child from Sexual Offenses Act. Okay, so what is, what is this act really doing? Because if in this case, which is relatively cut and dry if you ask me, but whatever. If in this case it doesn't work, where does it work? Does it work only if the police breaks down the door the moment that someone is consuming that type of content and obviously getting some sexual gratification from it? Like, how are you... <sighs> This to me sounds like the equivalent of saying, hey, we found you at your own house with a bag of cocaine. But since you were doing cocaine in your own house, it's not really illegal because you're in the privacy of your own house, you didn't affect anyone, so it's good. It's still illegal. It gets worse too. Harish had his charges quashed with the judge explaining that merely downloading and watching child pornography would not be considered a criminal offense under the POCSO Act and the Information Technology Law. The decision led to outrage from child protection groups or anyone who's not a pedophile, but whatever. An appeal was filed by two child advocacy organizations, Just Rights for Children Alliance, and I don't want to butcher that, begging the Supreme Court to reverse the High Court's disturbing precedent, arguing that legalizing the possession of child pornography would promote the material's creation and result in consequences for children worldwide. Exactly what I was saying. This is all supply and demand. This is all decriminalizing something that should be, in my opinion, more criminal. The impression is given to the general public that downloading and possessing child pornography is not an offense, which would increase the demand for child pornography and encourage people to involve innocent children in pornography, contended the petition. During Supreme Court proceedings, H.S. Kulka, who represented the child advocacy groups, noted that Harish had constantly watched the video over the course of two years. Oh, that is disgusting. I don't even know how you can excuse that. So you, you get an auto download, right? And most people don't open an auto download they don't want. And this person watches the auto download like a billion times over the past two years. And this is all some big coinky dink according to every my blood pressure. The POCSO Act says that if any video or photo is there, you need to delete the same. And in this case, the accused was constantly watching the video. He watched it for two years, according to the report. The first video was before the amendment, but the second was after the amendment, Pulka said. After hearing arguments, the bench consisting of Justice J.B. Pardiwala and Chief Justice India D.Y., last name I can't pronounce, ultimately reserved its ruling, noting that watching child porn may not be offense, but children being used in pornography will be an offense and is a matter of serious concern. The bench continued that if someone receives or downloads child pornography, they should quickly delete the material to avoid scrutiny with Chief Justice, again, I can't pronounce, stating someone receiving the child pornography on WhatsApp is not an offense. 
The Supreme Court has not yet struck down the Madras High Court decision, but has allowed child protection groups to submit written arguments until April 22nd. The Supreme Court of India's debate on child pornography potential semi-legalization comes amid an ongoing debate in the nation regarding the criminal status of marital rape. Oh God, this is something else that's gonna make me mm, fucking scream. According to Supreme Court Observer, a decision is currently pending to determine if marital rape will be made legal in the country as it is currently not considered a crime in situations where the raped wife is not a minor. There's a little bit more to the article, but I think we got the gist. I frankly am ready to dive off the roof of my house. So I think I'm going to stop there. I think personally, my own analysis is that everything is fucking upside down. Everything is upside down because the fact that even marital rape is being brought into this is so... The fact that it has to be called marital rape, I also find weird because like, yes, it's between husband and wife or whatever, but it's assault. Yeah, sure, you're married, but the, the bottom line is the bottom line. And in fact, I'd posit that putting marital in front of it is often a way to make it seem less serious than it is. Like it's, oh, but they knew the person. It's like, that is not relevant if you're assaulted. It's like with domestic abuse, right? It is called domestic abuse, but just because you're married to the person who hits you, that doesn't mean that they didn't hit you or all of a sudden they're allowed to hit you. I'm really not gonna get started with that one because I really think it's an easy one plus one. If someone says no, it's no. Whether you're married, girlfriend, boyfriend, don't know each other, it's no. So this is all heavily demoralizing and frankly kind of terrifying to me because above all, putting even aside the fact that this would be a law the one in regards to children and child pornography, that this would be a law that defends effectively pedophiles. It's more than anything, a law that leaves children out to fucking dry. Because where are the adults stepping in for the children who are going to be abused in the process of making this content? Like that's really where we're dropping the ball. Those pedophiles, they should go to jail forever. They should be, in my opinion, well, I'm not gonna get into all of that on here before I get censored, but the children, you're really just gonna be okay with not defending them like at all. You're just really gonna be okay with saying, hey, you know what? In the production of this content, you might get abused. You might be scarred in a way that you're never gonna get over. That's going to affect your entire life, if not even your health too. But sometimes it do be like that. Like, is that really where we're at? Anyway, you guys can let me know what you think in the comments down below. I really hope that if this continues to go in this direction, there is a worldwide just fucking outrage, but the productive outrage that does something because truly this is beyond the danger, the disgustingness, it's a very bad precedent to have in place because I feel like this leaves so much room for just degeneracy of all sorts and frankly, I'm alarmed. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you to my patrons as always, and I'll catch you guys next time.